let's talk about the most used Linux commands. Now I pulled up the history of my commands and I picked out some of my favorites here that I think every user should do or at least know about because terminal is one of those things, especially for Windows users coming to Linux, they're like, where's the graphic user interface for this? And a lot of times you just need to embrace that terminal. And some of these terminal commands will make you just absolutely love terminal. So uh, with this, this is a good break in. And I'm going to go over all these commands and just kind of showcase what they do. And I personally love them. So uh, check them out and uh, try them yourself because it'll change the way you use your Linux box. Now, if you'd like to ask me any questions, be sure and check out my Twitch. I live stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And with that said, let's get on the desktop. Okay, let's start out with you jumped into terminal. You're presented with this screen or something that looks like it. It's probably a little uglier than mine. If you want it to look like this, I'll put a link up in the top to make your terminal fancy like mine. But basically, the terminal, just to explain what it is, you have the user right here is the first one. The second one is the name of the PC that you're currently on. And this is the actual directory. Yours aren't going to look exactly like this, but that's basically what this little prompt is telling you. So if I went CD for change directory forward, which is going to be our first command is getting around. This puts us in the, the actual root of the directory. Now, if we go CD and then do a tidally, we'll go back to the home directory. So that's that. Now let's say we want to list the directory. We can do an ls for list the directory. And this is our second command is ls. And this lists the directory. Now this right here just does a, a basic listing. Now if we do ls-a, it includes all of the files in here. You see all those dots before the files? If there's a dot before the file, it hides it from a standard listing. So you only get this. Uh, now if let's say you do ls-a and then put an l on it, it does the long listing. Now, I actually have mine set up to always do long listing because I like to see that information. However, standard lists, just doing an LS, usually prints across the screen. So with that, that's listing in CD. Let's move on to understanding our drives. So let's see how much disk space is left in our drive. So if we do DF for disk free, dash H for human readable, this actually tells us what's going on and we can actually read it. It doesn't spit it out in bytes and crap. Like if you didn't do the dash H, we want to, we're a human. So we want to read it like a human. So I can see exactly what I have. Now I have a lot of partitions and a bunch of different stuff in here. How is my drives laid out is probably the next thing I want to know. So I want to list my, uh, my devices. So LS for list BLK for block. This lists all my actual hard drives in here. This is a really great command, lsblk. And you'll see that we have SDA, SDB, SDC, SDDD, and SDE. So I actually have five physical drives in here, uh, three of which are three terabyte drives, and then also three solid state drives, two which are 240 gigs, and one which is about 120 gigs. Uh, of those five drives that are in this system, I can tell you two are not being used. I have a three terabyte drive that's not being used and a 120 solid state that's not being used. That's the power of the LSBLK. Now, also the really cool part is this mount point. We can see how we can access this drive. Now, SDC is on boot. SDC3 is actual swap file. And then SDC4 is the root directory which has most of everything so SDC pretty much is the entire operating system um, this one is mounted to media backup this one's mounted to media games uh, this one doesn't have a partition but this tells you hey what partition do I need to mount maybe you know there's so much you can glean from this command I absolutely love it now the next command is DD now this is actually disk duplicator but often called disk destroyer because if you mess up this you'll really mess up a lot of stuff. So uh, the basic format for DD is input file if equals, and then you put, uh, let's say I had an ISO, let's say it was arch.iso, and then the output file would be OF and equals, and this is where it gets a little tricky. You see those uh, 
SDAs and stuff, well, we can actually pick out what disk we wanted out of there. I noticed that disk dev SDE wasn't being used. I could actually make a bootable drive from an Arch ISO directly if that was if that was an actual uh, flash drive in there. Um, I would just put OF and then hit enter here and it would create a flash drive. Now sometimes you have to do BS on the end of it. Let's say it's particular of the block size. Now uh, most instances you don't need to do this, but if you do, I always do BS equals one M. This makes all the block sizes one megabyte, which is pretty much the standard. So next up is going to be uname. Uh, uname is just basically it, it shows you information about your system. So I like to do uname SR. This shows me the system and then also the release version. And I'm on 4.19, the LTS version, because I was having problems with the latest kernel on uh, my particular system. And then I also like uname A. This kind of gives you a whole bunch of stuff. It gives you what you're on as Linux, uh, the name of the system, the kernel, and then, you know, time, date, all this other stuff. I don't really use all this. I always usually just do uname SR just, just for, you know, brevity purposes. But that is uname. Next up is going to be sudo. Now you see sudo used all the time. So let's say I want to do something with, uh, let's go to media. And let's say I wanted to make a directory here. And I'm like, let's say I make junk directory. Permissions denied. So let's go sudo make directory junk. We'll put in our password and then we'll do a listing. You know, you see how that junk directory is now made where I couldn't before. It elevates your current user to super user and you can do stuff that your user normally couldn't do. So uh, this is a very good command. What I see a lot of noobs do is they just do an SU for switch user and then they just type in their command and then they run as root. So then they can just go ahead and let's say remove directory or rm dir junk. This removes the directory, but you don't have to do sudo for everything. The problem with this is it's fine when you're in the system files because those system files are owned by root. But let's say you go into home or let's, ju let's just do CD and then the title and see where it puts us. Uh, right now it's in our home directory, right? So that should be home dash Titus is where our home directory lives for our actual user. But since we're running as root, we can look at our path name by going PWD and you'll notice we're actually in forward slash root and we, we are not in home Titus. So what happens if you switch user to root and you do a listing and then you make a directory in here as root, uh, let's make a junk directory and we do a listing again. That junk directory is now created and owned and everything's by root. So don't use root to run or install files, those types of things. Use sudo because it elevates your current user to super user and it just you're just going to have a lot better time. Uh, but don't don't run as root as far as messing around with your home directory or just anything dealing with the user interface. Uh, a lot of times I see some users run like uh, their file manager is root and that's can lead to some very bad thing so be very careful when running as root so we'll head and exit root and go back to our regular thing and we'll move on to the next command which is going to be ipa and this just kind of gives us our ip address this is obviously our local internal ip address but uh this is running on 69.10 lo stands for loop loopback and then ENP, this, yours is going to look a little bit different. It could be ETH0. It could could be a whole different thing. But this is just kind of telling us that we're on here. We're running on the 24 subnet, which is 255.255.255.0. And this is just kind of gives us our IP. You know, if we want to know our local IP, IP space A is fantastic for that. So let's go back. We're in the media directory still. Let's go ahead and make the directory uh, junk again. And we'll do a listing. And you see how it's owned by root. You can see it right here that this is the actual user and this is the actual group it's assigned to. So nobody can access this except root. But let's change that. Let's change ownership of that. So what we can do is we can go ch own and do uh, the user, which would be Titus. And then let's make it the wheel group. And we'll say junk for the, the actual directory we're changing. 
Uh, notice how I just kind of skipped ahead. That's not like magical editing. That's just me starting the directory and hitting tab to autocomplete what I'm typing. So I'm not, I'm not a, that fast of a typer. So we'll hit OK. It says not permitted. So we need to do a sudo. And we'll do a listing again. And now as you notice that the junk directory now has that. But let's say we only want people to read stuff in it. And if you look on the left hand side here, because this is a long listing, for that we can actually change this aspect. Uh, just a quick rundown of file permissions. Uh, this right here is read, write, execute. And this is for the owner of that. And then the next one, read, write, and execute, is actually for the group. So the group can read, it can't write, but it can execute. And then this section is for the actual guest of a computer. Let's say they don't have any writes. They can read this folder and they can execute, but they can't write to it. Let's say you just want to open it up wide open and just let everyone read, write, and execute anything and everything, which you should really never do. Uh, there's very, very few instances where I'd uh, want this, but you can do a chmod and then do 777 and say junk. Now, if we look there, that now is you can read, write, and execute as your owner, as the group, or as a guest to the actual system. Now, obviously, we don't want this, but I just wanted to go ahead and do that. Seven is, is basically read and write. If we do five, five, that returns it back to how it was because five, five says we want it to read and execute. But let's say we don't want any executing and we just want it to read and write. We can just do seven, six, six, and then we'll do a listing. You'll notice it can now just read and write, but there's no execute. That's a little bit better than allowing executing um, as a guest user. So we're gonna remove the junk directory because we're pretty much done with this folder and we'll go back to home, CD. Now let's go into our downloads directory and see what we have here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove supergrub and then we can have a couple commands that I wanna know. As far as zip files, we can use unzip and then just type in supergrub and this goes ahead and unzips the file. So unzip's really easy, but tar, you've probably seen that. I wanna explain the tar command real fast. Tar is when you have that tar.gz, which is a Linux only uh, zip file, basically. Uh, it does a really good job with compression. That's why so many people use tar. But let me break down the options here. You always do a dash and then X to, to extract what you're looking at. If you do C, that creates. So we want to extract. V means verbose. It means it spits out everything that's going on. So we always want to know what's going on. So we hit V and then F stands for file. So then you'd go to the file and then you would type in the actual uh, tar file. So it'd be like, let's say it was supergrub came into tar.gz. You'd type that in and it would extract that file. So I wanted to lay out tar real fast. If you're unsure of what command does what, you can easily do dash dash help. There's two dashes there and then help. So with the dash dash help command, you'll m memorize most of this stuff. But if you forget, which you will starting off, just know that you can come in here and see like V for verbose and then you can find the X for executable and F for file. All these are just kind of listed here, but there's a lot with tar. Uh, you can like, let's do LS dash dash help and you can kind of see a lot of the other uh, things that you can do with LS. I mean, there's just a really great thing. So always remember the dash dash help. As far as getting help, there's the dash dash help command, which is fantastic. Like LS VLK dash dash help kind of shows you all the different stuff that comes with this that you can actually do. But let's say you need this in a little bit more readable format or you want more examples and other things and the dash dash help just isn't quite getting you there. There's always the man and then LSBLK and this gives us the manual. So it gives you the synopsis of what is actually it's doing. It gives you the actual description and then the options are better laid out. So manual is probably a little bit better for a newbie but if you're just looking for a quick reference, dash dash help usually gets you there. So there's a couple things that I wanted to go over here. So LS again, let's look at what's in our downloads folder. We have supergrub here. Let's say I wanted to move supergrub, MV for move, supergrub, and we wanted to just push this to our root of our home directory. So if let's do that. We'll do an LS and then we'll go CD dot dot. This goes back one directory um, and just so you know what dot dot does, dot dot means back one directory, one dot means the current directory, which uh, there's good, let's say I was in home and I wanted to copy that zip file over as well. 
Uh, let's go ahead and move, and I'm gonna go downloads, supergrub.zip, and then let's say I wanna move it to our current directory I'm in. Now, I'm going all the way to downloads, grabbing that zip file, and then putting it in the current directory. So if we take a look, both of them are here. Now, obviously we don't want supergrub in this one, so rm removes a file, so we can do rm remove supergrub.zip, and it removes this file. So that's a great way. Or let's say we just wanna copy that super grub. So we'll copy that into back to downloads. This copy super grub from our current directory to downloads. So we'll go downloads and you'll see it there. But since we did a copy, we'll do a listing again over here. You'll see it's actually in both places. So we don't want that. So we'll do a remove. That's just basic moving of files around in Linux. So. Uh, just remember RM for remove or RMDIR for remove directory. But let's say you want to remove everything in a, a specific directory. You can do the actual directory name. Let's say junk had a whole bunch of junk in it and we wanted to remove it. We could do a dash R for recursive. It means everything in that directory is going to get wiped out. But let's say it just wasn't allowing me to. Uh, for whatever reason, you can put RF the F stands for force. It just says, hey, make sure you wipe it out, even if it's something that, uh, it, it for whatever reason, isn't allowing me to remove without the force command. So that removes the actual entire directory. And if you look, uh, the junk directory is gone. And if there was anything in it, it would also remove it from there as well. So two final commands I kind of want to leave you with is LSPCI. And uh, this is kind of a combo command. It kind of lists everything in your computer. This is kind of neat. It was in a current uh, PCI pass-through video I was live streaming. And I wanted to just kind of say, hey, this is a lot of information here. It kind of shows everything that's in the PCI bridge of this computer. But let's say I only wanted to grab like my actual graphics card. So uh, LSPCI, and then I can do a pipe symbol, which is just a shift in right above the inner key. That pipe symbol is what, what I just typed there. And then let's do a grep. And what grep does is it just says, hey, find this word and only print that line. And we only want to print VGA. This shows me I have two graphics cards in this computer. I have a 1660 and then also I have a, a RX uh, 500 or 400 series graphics card. This is actually a 580. But uh, for this, you can actually kind of know about the LSPCI and grep commands. Same with LSUSB. This kind of lists all of the USBs and, and you can kind of play around with this command. Grep's great with everything. So if you get too much garbage on the screen, uh, you can really just kind of mix and mash these things. So let's say I only wanted to grep Logitech. It would only print out Logitech, which is great. But let's say we wanted to just, let's go back into our commands that just spit out a whole bunch of junk. And like LS block, you see how we had that? I was like, oh, you know what? Um, the help, I only wanted to know about the size, something with the size. So let's let's grep size. And then it just only spits what I needed to know about the size using the help command. So just remember all these commands, you can kind of combine and just create magical things with it. Uh, just, it, it's so powerful. I, I love the terminal, but it's absolutely scary getting started. And uh, it shouldn't be. It's, it's something that once you get going on it and you learn it, Oh, it's so fantastic. I, I absolutely love this. And there you have all of the commands that I use on just like a daily or at least a weekly basis in Linux. I absolutely love all these commands. And oh man, I tell you, it, I couldn't imagine using a computer without them. I know when I go back to Windows, I miss my terminal. I miss using these commands. Uh, but now you know what I use on a daily basis when it comes to terminal. And with that said, let me know your favorite commands down in the comments section below because there's just a vast array, a sea of commands that you can use in Linux in this terminal. And I just, it would take hundreds of videos to probably cover them all. So let me know. And with that said, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.